Hello, great to join. Um, obviously, this one's um, we're very attention to the United States and Russia. Could you say what diplomacy, if any, is, is still going on? Are the, the channels of communication still on specifically on this? You had the Secretary speaking to for Mr. Lavrov. Or, or, or is there some communication still in this regarding her case or the case of other Americans? There is communication regarding her case. There is communication regarding the, pay, the case of uh, Paul Whelan. The fact is, however, that this process has not moved as swiftly as we would have liked. We have certainly not gotten to the point that we would have liked uh, by now. Uh, Brittany Greiner has been in detention, wrongfully detained for the better part of a year, for some nine months. Paul Whelan has uh, been in detention since uh, December of 2018, nearly four years. We have done everything uh, that we have been able to do to make clear to the Russians uh, the priority we attach to the release of Paul Whelan and to Brittany Greiner, uh, that includes the call that the Secretary made to Foreign Minister Lavrov. It was the only time Secretary Blinken has spoken to Foreign Minister Lavrov during the course uh, of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, and it sent a very clear signal that this is something we are absolutely focused on. It is something we'll remain focused on until Paul and Brittany uh, are reunited with their families. We haven't gotten into the habit of detailing specifically the nature of these conversations or specifically uh, when and how they occur. But I can tell you uh, they have continued, uh, including in recent days. Uh, our message consistently has been that the Russians should uh, engage on the substantial proposal that the secretary first outlined this summer. Uh, but at the very least, they should engage seriously and constructively and in good faith. Uh, if that happens, uh, we are uh, prepared uh, to uh, see to it and to take steps of our own. Uh, that would see Paul and Brittany reunited with their families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, follow, follow up on, sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, how can the U.S. intensify your efforts, if at all, to avoid Brittany Greiner being transferred to a penal colony? So uh, I want to be clear about this. We uh, unfortunately don't know when, where, or whether uh, Brittany Greiner uh, will be transferred um, going forward. Uh, and I say that for a few reasons. Number one, uh, there are options that remain available to her legal team, and they're going to have to make their own decisions about uh, which steps they pursue. We're, of course, in very close contact with Brittany Greiner's legal team. Our Office of the Special, uh, Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs is regularly in touch uh, with her legal team, with her broader network, uh, with her wife, uh, Sherelle. And others, um, they are going to have to decide which steps they pursue, knowing that <clears throat> this process has been shambolic. Uh, of course, uh, we know that and have known that going into it. Second, uh, the Russians may not tell us uh, before they transfer Brittany Griner. Uh, unfortunately, the Russians do not routinely inform us ahead of time uh, before they transfer uh, American detainees. And, and third, uh, even if they were to tell us, uh, they could uh, change their mind. Uh, they could. Uh, change uh, the decision regarding uh, her location or her disposition. Uh, our message when it comes to Brittany Greiner has been clear. She should be released. She is wrongfully held. Uh, we have requested consistent consular access to her. Our charge d'affaires in Moscow, Elizabeth Rude, uh, sought to speak to her today. Of course, uh, Brittany Greiner was not in the courtroom. She was um, in attendance via video link. Uh, our charge was not able, ultimately, uh, to speak to Brittany Griner. The Russian authorities would not uh, permit that. Right. You said that you've been discussing this with Russia in recent days. Can you tell us broadly uh, what you've been discussing, what the significance of the discussion was? Well, there's only so much I can offer here, and I've offered uh, most of it uh, already. We have an imperative at play, and that imperative is to see to it that Paul Whelan and Brittany Griner are uh, freed as soon as possible. Uh, we have found collectively in our experience in uh, affecting the safe return of Americans wrongfully detained overseas that these conversations are best conducted uh, in private channels. Uh, that was the case with Trevor Reed. We didn't speak of our efforts with the Russians uh, to secure his release before the fact of his release uh, was announced earlier uh, this year. And I suspect we won't be in a position to detail exactly uh, the messages that we are conveying uh, to the Russians or the responses that we're hearing from the Russians uh, beyond uh, the simple uh, core message that the Russians should engage, they should engage, engage seriously, 
they should engage constructively, and they should engage uh, in good faith. I'll come back. Just to, I'll, sorry, I'll, come, I'll, I'll, come, okay. I'll come back to you. I'm just curious whether today's decision will cause, trigger any tactical change on your end. Because in fact, it was Lavrov a couple of months ago offered quite a quite quiet diplomacy in this case. Is that your judgment based on today's decision? Judgment that quiet diplomacy is not working? Well, those quiet conversations uh, have been ongoing. I hesitate to call this uh, diplomacy because uh, ultimately this is about uh, wrongful detainees. These are about uh, Americans. These are about uh, the lives of individuals who have been separated from their families for the better part of a year, in the case of Brittany Greiner, uh, and the better part of four years when it comes to Paul Wheeler. Uh, so we've had those quiet conversations uh, for some time, even before Secretary Blinken made public uh, the offer of a substantial proposal that we had put on the table. Whether today's Denial of uh, the appeal of Brittany Greiner changes the Russian posture. We couldn't say. Uh, of course, it is our hope that this will unlock the next step in the process. Uh, but ultimately, uh, this is going to have to be a decision that the Russians make. We have made very clear the decision uh, and the choices we are prepared to make. Oftentimes, when it comes to seeing Americans reunited with their family, it's on senior officials to make difficult choices. Often in these cases, it is incumbent on the president of the United States to make difficult choices. Uh, he has demonstrated his willingness, including uh, with a former wrongfully detained uh, American in Russia, Trevor Reed. Uh, he's demonstrated that willingness to make difficult uh, decisions, uh, and we are prepared uh, to uh, take such decisions if it would uh, see the release of Paul Whelan and Brittany Greiner. Sorry. No, I just wanted to, to ask about a figure of Americans that are being held in Russia. Do you have how many? There currently are two Americans uh, we deem to be wrongfully detained uh, in Russian custody. I don't have a figure, a public figure to offer you of Americans who are in Russian detention because that uh, figure fluctuates uh, over time. It's not static. Uh, but currently there are two Americans we deem to be wrongfully detained in Russia. Yes. Um, this morning, a Lebanese general uh, spoke about Austin Tice and said his mediation efforts were ongoing. Do you have any updates to provide, or what's the latest on that in terms of uh, U.S. efforts to secure his release or find out find out his whereabouts? Those efforts are ongoing, uh, and in this case, is uh, just as uh, heart wrenching. Uh, Austin has been in detention, separated from his family for a quarter of his life. Uh, we recently marked uh, a somber milestone, 10 years of separation from his family, 10 years uh, of detention. Um, he recently marked his 40th birthday, uh, and unfortunately, we had this somber uh, milestone to accompany it. Uh, this has been a priority of, I can say, successive administrations, but certainly a priority of this administration. We are prepared, and uh, we have taken steps to demonstrate uh, that we are uh, ready and willing to speak to anyone who could possibly help to affect Austin's release. When someone like Roger Carstens, our special presidential envoy for hostage affairs, travels around the world uh, to speak with foreign officials and foreign counterparts, uh, this is, as I was alluding to a moment ago, not traditional diplomacy. This is hostage diplomacy. We are willing to do things. We are willing to speak to people uh, if it has the potential to free a wrongfully detained American to free an American hostage uh, that we otherwise wouldn't do in the conduct of more, shall we say, traditional uh, American diplomacy. So these efforts are unceasing. Uh, we regularly speak with Deborah and Mark, Austin's parents. Um, there are many people in this administration uh, who came to know them during the course of uh, the Obama-Biden administration uh, years ago now, and those relationships have continued. We assure them, we assure the world, we assure Austin uh, we are doing everything we can uh, to see his release. Just a second one. 